Hello, we are live. Uh, this is our first Facebook Live using split screen. Uh, we're using a technology called Be Live. It's a lot of fun. I have a very special guest with us here today, which I'm really, really excited about. I have the one and only John Loger um, from Consulting Unleashed. Um, John is uh, he is a he has a tremendous marketing mind, and um, I think that what he's going to help us do today is unpack how to get quick wins in our marketing. Um, you know, as you know, Fairtech, we've we've been doing inbound marketing in one way, shape, or form over the last 16 years. But one of the things that we always run into is the challenge of you know what these things take time. You have to build a marketing process. You got to get the ball, and you got to you got to push it up to the top of the hill, and then ideally the results uh, steamroll after that. They basically roll you know, once the ball's rolling down the other side, which is awesome, but. Those first 90 days or the first 30 days, 60 days, if you don't have those quick wins, um, oftentimes clients can get pretty impatient, and um, we're going to discuss all that today. So before I do, let me kind of unpack this, um, who John is, and then I'll kind of ask him a couple different questions. Uh, things you should know is that uh, we are on Facebook Live. I will see your questions, so I'll try to have John answer those as well. So uh, just write them, and I will, I'll be able to see them um, live. Um, so um, John, John has been doing marketing, it says here, for almost 25 years, been doing, um, doing sales, marketing, consulting, training. You're an international speaker and coach. He's helped clients generate millions of dollars in business um, all over the world in almost every imaginable industry. Um, he's had the privilege of conducting over 5,000 one-on-one strategic focus sessions with managing directors, CEOs, entrepreneurs, in over 140 different industry groups. And in the last 18 months, John has helped launch 27 consulting businesses that have generated over $4.2 million in consulting contracts uh, around the world. Um, so before I, I, I you know, hand the ball over to John, I will say that this is kind of funny, is, is that I met John, um, I was, I'm a, I'm a constant YouTube learner. And what I mean by that is that, um, I'm a junkie for learning marketing stuff and I was watching a video and it, it automatically played another video right after that. And here was John and I, for some reason I hadn't turned it off and I was just kind of just listening in the background and I was like, Oh, that, that's pretty smart. Oh, that's really smart too. And then before I knew it, I was this private John Loger fan and it was really funny. And what happened was I, I was talking to my business partner and I'm like, you know what, we gotta reach out to this guy, we gotta talk to him, we gotta see how he can help our business. And then I went to a convention called Click Funnels, uh, Click Funnel Hacking Live. It was in it was in Dallas, Texas, and I had to use the restroom before one of the sessions, and I'm walking and I just stopped and I was just like, You're John Loger. Oh my gosh. And he's like, Yes, <laughs> I'm John Loger. And so basically what happened, it was really funny. I was like, I need to talk to you. I have to use the restroom first, but I need to talk to you. And the rest is history. We had lunch together and I was like, wow, this guy's just as smart in person as he is on video. It's an awesome mastermind. Um, he's an awesome uh, master of marketing. And so we're in for a very special treat today. So I've done a lot of talking. John, Chris, tell, tell us a little bit about yourself. Thank you. Um, look, I've been in, in the consulting game literally for 27 years. Uh, in the last few years, I've had over 100 uh, uh, consultants that I've helped launch new consulting um, businesses. Collectively, they've done $35 million. Oh, sorry, nearly $42 million in revenue collectively. Um, uh, and that's uh, purely by focusing on generating clients that will invest more in their services. So um, I, uh, there are, I guess there are different levels that I work with. I have helped people who are just starting out. Uh, I get a lot of people who are freelancing and they just want to scale up. They want to get more. They want to be uh, attract better quality clients, raise their level of, of revenues and scale their businesses more effectively so they can build uh, uh, stability in their business and, and uh, not work uh, at, hourly, at ridiculous hourly rates. And then the third level is people are scaling seven figures plus. So they're actually treating their business like an asset. So they have to build structures. So um, essentially, it's really helping them, uh, one, gain a level of clarity in their business, but more importantly, focus on the consistency of client generation, because that's pretty much where it's at. Fulfillment is something you can always buy in. Uh, but as, as a buddy of mine, uh, Robert Herjavec, always tells me is sales above all else. 
You know, mm. when times are crappy, sales above all else. When times are great, sales above all else. So for me, in, in my businesses, uh, the, the heavy focus is on sales. Um, and it's really important that, uh, that the attention is paid there. And then more importantly, the balance of profitability, making sure that your margins are right, making sure your deliverability is right. And I think the biggest thing, a lot of people get lazy, um, one in what they're delivering, but also lazy in relation to how they understand their markets. The biggest moves that you can make that if you get really intimate with the markets that you're going after and you understand them, it's much easier to be able to scale and deliver services because of that experience or because of that exposure. And you can do that really quickly. It doesn't take long to figure out what's not working in any market and then being able to come into that market um, and share an idea where people are saying, you know, yeah, we, we need to do this, you know? Um, so, and I'm, I'll, I will share a whole bunch of stuff as we're talking through here and, and I'll answer the questions you've got. So that's, that's me in a nutshell, man. Well, I think one of the burning questions there's a thing here is, uh, you got to ask where you're from, and then they also tell the same story about you were. Uh, I asked you where your office was, and uh, I want I want you to tell them that answer as well. Um, I, okay, so you'll notice I've got a Minnesota accent. Um, <laughs> I'm actually from Australia, a place called Brisbane. Uh, it's a pretty place uh, on the east coast, um, but my home for the last three years has been an aeroplane. Uh, probably every two weeks, I'm on some form of international flight. I'm in some city in the United States, uh, um, whether it be anywhere from New York to Austin to Chicago, Orlando. These are these are probably these are my last uh, few runarounds. I've just come from San Diego. I'm in San Francisco at the moment, heading back to LA, Las Vegas, uh, and then out to uh, uh, out to Australia again. So I do spend a lot of time. And the reason I do that is because I actually like to go to a lot of industry-based events. I'm trying to keep, um, uh, I guess, uh, informed to the trends within industries. It helps me to help my the people that I work with, the consultants I work with, to target better quality uh, uh, <clears throat> groups in the market. Um, and also, uh, I spend time at events, you know, skilling myself and learning, you know, all the latest marketing stuff. But the big thing is meeting people. And so, uh, for me, I, I get a lot more out of face to face and engaging with people. And that's why I've made a fairly significant commitment to traveling uh, around the world um, and, and just uh, get engaging, connecting. You know, um, and that's basically, fire, you know, that's that's made a huge difference in my business as well. So, uh, being able to do that, uh, you know, the lifestyle that I can lead based on. Uh, the consulting businesses that I've been able to grow, um, you know, that gives me that freedom. Uh, so I'm not tied to a desk chair. I'm tied to a four foot by three foot sort of cubicle on an aeroplane. Uh, and, and I've got my little dining room table sitting in front of me <laughs> where, where I work from occasionally. Um, but most times uh, uh, I'm, I'm hitting, I'm hitting uh, you know, major cities and events basically. That's cool. That's yeah. cool. So, um, what we're going to do right now is we're going to dive in and um, we're going to talk about what we talked about before. Was we talked about uh, the idea of what we call quick wins. Mm -hmm. um, uh, one thing I forgot to mention when I was introducing John is that um, not only is he a master of theory, uh, when I was talking to him, he was just constantly about the actual tactics. So I interview a lot of people. I talk to a lot of people and they have these great theories about marketing and that's really great. But I often find myself like, well, now what? What I like about what John does is, is that he's like, okay, this is a theory. This is what we need to accomplish, and this is how I do it. And so cool. I was talking to John in the, uh, the pre-interview, and he was like, yeah, we can, we can dive into some of that stuff. Mm -hmm. So um, question number one, let me see if I can uh, show this here. Question number one is uh, – I thought it would show a description. I'm going to have to uh, you know, use this software a little bit better. Question number one is – how do you get quick wins in the first 30, 60, and 90 days? Um, now, there's, with, there's two sides of quick wins. There's quick wins for the consultant to generate clients very quickly, and then there's quick wins for your clients to, to obviously uh, uh, be able to scale and, and, and generate. So if we can talk about us as you know, our businesses, as our consultants, the fastest things that you can do to generate clients, I, I, have, I, call, I call it the concept of blitzing. Like in... in um, uh, in NFL football, you have the blitz. The blitz is a power play, lots of energy, lots of, you know, you're, you're, it's designed to create um, uh, pressure. And the idea of blitzing for revenue is that you're focusing on income generating activities um, in a very short space of time 
and working towards bringing in uh, cash flow and revenue of the business. So the fastest thing you can do in terms of getting immediate impact rather than waiting for inbound marketing to, to kick in for your business is to actually work with what I call the familiar list. Um, and so you want to, you know, there are people that you, you're exposed to, that you're connected to, who are also connected to other people. One of the greatest strategies is to teach people what you do. So if you have a strategy or a tactic that actually gets results for people, show it to them. Give away your secrets. Oftentimes I find that when you show people those types of things, they're going to turn around and say, you know what, can you do this for our business? Yeah. So one of the fastest ways to get clients is teach people what you do. So, so if I was a consultant, the first thing I would do is get a really quick list. Um, I've done this on numerous, numerous occasions to say, look, if I can show you a strategy that will give you 30, a 30% 30 bump in revenue in a really short space of time and actually show you how to execute it, can you give me 10 or 20 minutes to get some feedback on it? That's the offer. Simple email. I've got this idea. Want to show it to you. Just want to know what you think about it, right? Wow. Nine times out of 10, there'll be people who say, yeah, I'll have a look. Uh, yeah, I'm interested. Uh, yeah, I need a bump in revenue, right? Um, and are, you, are you doing that via email or do you send email. a video? I would just send an email. Like it'd be a quick email. Say, hey, I've got a quick question. Hey, I need a small favor. I want you to check this out, but I need your feedback. This is what it does. This is the benefit you're going to get out of paying mm -hmm. a little bit of attention invariably every time when you do that they're going to turn around and say this is cool we're not doing it right now can you do this for us it's a really fast way to generate clients um, if i was dealing with uh, um, industry niches so for example we're looking at uh, health niches uh, if i was if, if i was in the health market dealing with chiropractors or dealing with osteopaths or you know uh, um, uh, medi spas those sorts of things or even cash-based medical hormone therapy that sort of stuff these people are spending a ton of money to generate clients because the average sale is fairly high. The problem is there's a lot of wastage. You know, they, they're, they're not very targeted. Um, they don't test a lot of their marketing. They tend to throw away a lot of cash. Um, but the thing is that they want the phones to ring off the hook, right? <laughs> so, so now this is going to sound really stupid, right? This is, this is how basic it gets, right? So, if, so the number one thing is they want the phones to ring off the hook, Right. They want a person on the other end of the line saying, I'm interested, let's say we're, talk, we're going to do hormone therapy clinics, right? Mm -hmm. They're going to say, look, I'm interested in exploring hormone therapy because I need some help. You know, I'm getting into an age and I want to get some energy and I want to keep things going, right? Yeah. Um, uh, I, I want to, um, uh, that's the inquiry. That's the type of person they want is somebody who has an interest, put up their hand. So here's, a, here's the stupid question that I would ask the hormone therapy clinic. If I can get you 10 clients that put up their hand and say, I want hormone therapy services, I'm interested in finding out how I can use hormone therapy right now, are you interested? Yeah. <laughs> if I can do that for you quickly, that I can get somebody to put up their hand and say, hey, pick up a phone, dial into you and say, I need help. My first question is, will you help that customer? Can you help them, <laughs> right? Yeah, They're sure. going to go, yeah. So if I can sit down with you and show you how we can actually do that, uh -huh. are we cool? Yeah. That's it, yep. right? It seems like a stupid question and yeah. an obvious question, but yep. no, it's a very direct thing. You want 10 clients to pick up the phone right now and say, hi, I need to find out about hormone therapy? Uh -huh. Is that what you want? They're going to go, yeah. So if I show you a strategy where we can do that all day long, would that be cool? Uh, right. Now, now tell me something, though. Um, yep. Well, I got two questions. One is we're just sending a general email. Do you, just do you have any trips, uh, tips or tricks about subject lines that you would use on, on um, like quick that? question i need a small favor um can i have your help uh can you help me um not sure if this is for you um those sorts of uh, uh quick sort of yeah uh, curiosity cu curiosity type headlines yeah. the other headline is can i send you 10 clients can i send you 10 customers can wow. i refer you 10 customers this is a great you know yeah sure you can refer me 10 customers yeah. um now, relevance is key. So this is the thing. A lot of people will get concerned about spam and all that sort of stuff. It's important to be relevant. The more relevant you are and the more plausible in what you're sharing, the more likelihood you're going to get the open rate and the more likelihood you're going to get a response. So okay. in, every, in every communication, you're going to have a call to action, right? So my call to action would be, hey, um, is it okay if we have a 10-minute chat about this, right? Mm -hmm. Or just, just reply yes to this email and I'll touch base with you. That's it. So if you want to know more about me referring customers or patients to you, mm -hmm. um, just reply yes to this email and I'll set a time to have a quick chat with you, right? Okay. Don't put links to, to uh, calendars or scheduling because they're not going to click on your links. But if, even a simple, yeah, I want to talk to you, right? I can get that response 
10, 15 times a day, sending out 100 emails. Wow. Right? The more specific, the more, this is the key, the more relevant I am, the more specific the email, the better the response rate. Okay. You're not sending any attachments like a case study or anything like that. You're just nothing. You're selling the dream, right? You want this. Yeah. Can I, do you want 15 patients <laughs> for your practice, right? Yeah. Do you want do you want uh, um, do you want ten new SEO clients that are going to spend three to five grand a month, Chris? You want yeah. those? Sure. Yeah. 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 If you want to know how, yeah, exactly, right? You're gonna, you, you know, you might question that email. You might go, what you know, what's this? Yep. Right. Some people go, I'm curious, right? Yeah. Um, uh, uh, it's funny we're talking about email. Mark Cuban just responded to a cold email, and he invested a couple of million dollars in a brand new idea because of a cold email. So he was, <laughs> this is the this is the cold email that Mark Cuban responded to. Mark, do you want to disrupt the insurance industry? <laughs> that was the subject line, right? Are yeah. you ready to disrupt the insurance industry? He responded to that cold email to a 23-year-old kid who put up a company called thezebra.com, and now that company has been funded for $23 million off a cold email. Mark Cuban responds to cold email. The, the CEO of Corwell Banker, Remax, Century 21 have responded to cold emails, <laughs> right? We're talking billion-dollar corporations where people will respond to yep. a cold email. Yep. Relevancy, curiosity wins yep. the day. I, I, I know this sounds really crazy, but I, I come up with a lot of clients and they'll say stuff like, oh, well, that's a business-to-business -business product or that's a business-to-consumer product. And I was like, at the end of a business and at the end of a consumer – is a person. So when you're thinking about marketing, it's really B to P because mm -hmm. you're talking to a person at the end of the day. Yeah. People people have dreams. They they, they you know they want to go on vacation. They want to do these things, or yeah. they want to solve a problem. And so if you get the right message to the right client at the right time, mm -hmm. I don't care what kind of product you're putting. Mm -hmm. You want to strap mm -hmm. it to a, a pony and send it to his house. I don't care. Yeah. At the end of the day, it's a person, right? Well, that's right. Yeah. I mean, you know, think about things that, that creates, create havoc within industries. Legislation creates havoc within industries, right? So if, there, if you see a piece of legislation where, like I might go on a feed with an association of, a, of, a, of, a, of a, an industry niche. Let's say we were going to the pharmaceutical association and we're talking about the pill pushes, not the not you know vaccines and stuff like that. So, uh, for example, if legislation changes and that legislation has an impact on how they can sell their product to the market, and I'm in the marketing game. All I've got to do is come up with a solution on how to counteract the legislation, right? In yeah. most cases, it's not difficult to do that. But because it becomes a highlighted fact within the industry, if I'm the only guy talking about it, I now become the expert. <laughs> so this is a classic, and I'll, I'll give you a demonstration of how this worked. Um, within not for, the not-for-profit organizations in the professional network. So I'm talking about associations that were only designed for professional businesses, not charities and, and uh, churches and stuff like that. These, these are organizations that are the governing bodies for uh, professional industries, uh, accountants, bankers, um, you know, uh, uh, different uh, aspects. One of, the big, one of the legislation changes that occurred in the, um, the financial services fraternity was uh, because so many people were, were getting creamed by all these scams Ponzi schemes, the, the in Bernie Madoff and all this sort of stuff, yep. the, the governing bodies started to tighten up on um, uh, qualifications and certifications and what they could and what they couldn't say. This yeah. was a huge thing. Yeah. So they felt that because of this tightening up, this would restrict the way that they market, right? Um, but it didn't because yeah. nothing really changed. It's just that they're consciously going, we just have to comply. So what all I did was, hey, imagine using compliance to double the number of clients you've got right now. That was, that was the question. Imagine using the compliance, the legislation, to actually double the number of customers you've got sitting right now, wow. right? And then people went, how the hell do we do that, right? Let's have a chat. So then all of a sudden in the financial services industry, I became the expert on how to get around the compliance strategy. Just because you knew the rules. Just because I knew the rules, I knew that people were angry and upset yeah. by them. It was going to impact and affect their business. Yeah. Again, this is something that was going to have a long-term effect, not an immediate effect. But because everybody was talking about it, all they did was, well, how do we use it to double what we want, right? So and we, it wasn't very difficult to answer that question. And all of a sudden, just because you know one rule or something like that, you're a yeah. subject matter expert. Yeah, all of a sudden, I'm an expert. They couldn't say, oh, are you in the financial planning industry? No. 
<laughs> yeah, I'm, a, I'm a marketer, dude. I know how to use what you've got to get more clients, right? Yeah. Now, you know, we can have that conversation, but yeah. So we've talked about how you can get quick wins to get more clients. Now mm-hmm. we'll talk about you get an client and yeah. he wants to get a, a quick he wants to get quick wins because inbound marketing takes long to get you know a long time to set up. Okay, so if I'm gonna do if I'm gonna do quick wins for clients, uh, there's 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 a couple of ways to describe this. I call it reignition. So we're either gonna go and market to existing clients or past clients, right? We're gonna do it, we're gonna do a one-off super sale, fire sale, or we're going to do a one-off re-offer to bring people back into the business. So you'll run one campaign, and that campaign is not a one-shot promotion. This is a mistake that most people make in their business. They think, I'm just going to run a promotion and then see what happens. Yeah. If you want to succeed in this strategy, and I'm going to give you my personal um, uh, super method of getting you know, a shitload of conversions. Um, <laughs> okay, I'm, it's on a recorded line, so we're ready. <laughs> yeah. so, so a perfect example of this would be, um, let's say a roofing company. So a roofing companies spend a ton of money on, on advertising promotion because it's high cost. The, the customer is a high, uh, high value customer. Um, generally, the, 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 the sales are worth between 8,000 and 16,000 plus. So it's a, it's a nice chunky sale. They'll spend between 500 to 1,000 plus dollars to acquire a customer. That's what they're going to be spending. So it's a high cost to acquire. Um, and for them, it's trawling through leads. Like it's mass quoting. The more quotes we do, the more sales we get, the more, you know, the more business we do. So there's this mentality that we've got to feed the machine constantly to get out there. So I sat there and we, we, were, we were saying, okay, well, we need to do this a little bit better online so to get better results. But before we go and do that, we want to put some cash in your bank account. How about we make your marketing free for the next 12 months? Would that be cool? <laughs> right? So here's how we did it. I said, we're going to take the last 600 quotes, last 600, six to 700 quotes that you've done that didn't buy your services. And we're going to make a direct offer. And this was the offer. So the offer was saying, hey, we've been in this business for 30 years and we were about to spend a ton of money promoting the fact that we've been around a long time, we've got a great reputation and we were about to put that all into advertising. But you know what? We thought about spending the money with the people that came to us first. So we're going to give you a couple of grand towards your roof, towards your roof restoration for basically inquiring for our services. Now, here's the thing. The prices were high. So the price for the roof restoration were at the top end. Mm-hmm. Two grand came off the top end, right? So the, co- the cost of acquisition was nothing. Yep. These were people that already quoted. So all it was was, hey, you quoted us. Our question is, did you, did you go ahead with the work with somebody else or are you still interested? That was it. That was yep. the offer. We're, we're about to spend a ton of money on advertising promotion. We thought we'd give it to you instead. Mm-hmm. So if you're interested, we will requote your job with the new offer and then we can help you get your roof restored. That wow. was the deal. So that was the first. That was the first offer, right? You can. You can. You were sending that out via email. You were sending that out. How were you getting that out? It was email, right? Yeah. They had they had emails because these are already quotes that they'd sent, so they had sure. email, right? Sure. So we switched on the campaign. The campaign lasted twenty nine minutes because they got seventy one people come back in twenty nine minutes, right? <laughs> they did. They did uh, two hundred eighty thousand dollars worth of revenue in tw- from that 29 minutes of campaigning. The reason we had to shut it down is because I couldn't handle the number of inquiries. Yeah. Right. They had, they had to follow them up. Right. Yep, so they yep. did about 280 grand. So that gave them lots of cash to invest in all the other marketing we were going to do for the next 12 months. Right. Um, but this is something that we could do periodically for them to get quick cash. The fastest pl- place to get revenue is go to your existing clients, make a direct offer to them for them to buy, make it scarce, make it quantity sensitive. Um, give them a plausible reason as to why they should take advantage of your offer. And the sequence goes like this. Here's the great offer, whatever the great offer is. And generally, I don't want to come up with the offer. I generally ask them, have you had an offer that worked really well in the past? Let's reignite that offer, right? Let's see what happens. Generally, what will happen, the offer will work, right? Um, so we'll, I would come up with a couple of ideas. We'll run the offer. So we'll run a test, a small test. Not a mass, We're not going to run out to the whole market. Remember, we're marketers, test, 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 right? We want to get better conversions. So we want to test the offer. What do you think of the offer? So here's the sequence. Here is the offer, relevant, compelling, uh, scarcity, quantity, and time sensitive. That's the offer, right? Okay. Second email, hey, not sure if you got this subject line. Just want to make sure you got this, right? Hey, not sure if you got this offer. This is what it's about. This is what, what we're doing. If you're interested, let us know. Third email in the sequence, love to know what you thought about this offer. Love to know, subject line. 
Um, uh, look, uh, we sent this out to only a handful of people. You're one of the people that were, were getting this offer. We just want to know what you think about this offer. Was this a great offer or was this a crappy offer? Just let us know. Quick reply on the email, right? The last email in the sequence is, are you interested in taking advantage of this offer? Yeah. We are offering it to a limited number of people. Um, it is uh, time sensitive. This is our opportunity to put some money in your pocket. Um, are you interested in going ahead with this offer? That's it, right? We would take a handful of people off the, off the list and then we would then follow up and say, I'm not sure if you've been opening our emails, but this is what we did. I just want to know what you thought about it. That's it, mm -hmm. right? This is why they made 300 grand in less than a wow. week, right? So you can take that exact sequence and that strategy, put it in. You can do it in your business. I can do it in my agency. I've done it in my agency. You can do wow. it in any business. You can take a variation of that and say, hey, here's an awesome offer. Um, uh, just want to make sure you got this offer. Hey, love to know what you thought about this offer. Hey, are you interested in this great offer? Right? <laughs> That's it, four sequence. Um, I've run that campaign in several companies, like literally hundreds of companies. It yep. has never failed. The company <laughs> has never failed. It's always made money. Um, I've had some huge wins. Uh, the smallest list that I ran that offer to was to 30 people for a company. Uh, they made 120 grand in less than a week to, out of 30 people, right? Uh, that was the smallest campaign, 30 people. They couldn't get it. They didn't have a list big. Here's a company who'd been in business for 25 years, didn't have an email list bigger than 30 people. That's ridiculous. But 30 people still pulled in 120 grand, right? So that's a really fast action, quick way to get results for clients. If you're doing inbound strategy where you require, um, uh, you know, setting up a campaign and then uh, nurturing that campaign into some form of lead magnet and going through a sequence to convert that client to filter them into a better quality customer. The fastest way to, to, to do that is to actually use, um, uh, bypass the sequence, bypass the opt-in. Go straight for what is the most important action you want the customer to do. Nine times out of 10, there are only three actions that you want a customer to do on a website. Pick up the phone, call me, um, give me direct information about your inquiry so I can uh, I can respond to you or hit the buy now button. They're the only three actions that you want a customer to do on a website. So if your campaign or your strategy is geared to the most optimal action for the client, you're going to dramatically improve the chances of that happening. The biggest mistake that most marketers make is they're getting too clever for the market. If I'm, if I'm scrolling around looking for services, I don't want to go downloading lead magnets and getting this. And the only time I'm ever, I'm ever going to do that is if I actually care enough to spend a little bit of time. But most times, the reason I'm looking is I'm looking because I need something quickly. I'm trying to get my hands on something fast. So, so to, to make that happen, um, a good friend of mine, Justin Brook, even wrote, uh, talks about this a lot. We're, as marketers and funnel builders and all that sort of stuff, if we're in that game, we're looking, we're trying to build a relationship, but we're not trying to do it based on how the customer behaves. If we do it the way the customer behaves and give the customer what they want and make it easy for them, then the conversion rates will dramatically improve. So if you want somebody uh, to, to pick up the phone and call you, don't put a form in for them to opt into on the, on the page. Just say at the top of the page, you need to dial this number. At the middle of the page, you need to dial this number. And by the way, if you forget these two numbers, you need to dial this number because it's all about dialing the number. If you want them to fill in a form, say if you want this, if you want the best quote or the best uh, action, you've got to give us these three pieces of information. Somebody will be at you within the next hour or so. And that's, uh, that's, a, that's the other thing. If you want fast results, you want fast responses. We're in the world where we forget the forms that we fill out what most people do in business is they're really crappy at following up and they're really crappy at following through. Sure. So, so, so to, to speed up results for a client, it's like you've got to teach them how to convert. It's like I talk about the hormone therapy idea a moment ago where if I was going to target hormone therapy, right, I'd be sitting to say, listen, if I send, I'm going to send you 40 clients a month that have the propensity to spend $6,000 plus with you. Will you help those people buy your product? That's my question. Yeah. Will you help them? right? Now, the person's going to say, well, of course, we're going to help them. That's what we want. So if I call your business and you put me on an answering machine, you've lost me. You just lost $6,000. If I call your business and you just quote me a price, you've lost $6,000. So what I mean by that in terms of will you help me? Will you actually ask the questions that are relevant 
to actually help me make the decision that you're the right hormone therapy clinic that I should be dealing with and actually book me in for that appointment, for that process and the sales process. Will you help me do that, right? Because if you do that, those 40 people that I send you, you're going to close 20 to 30 of them. 20 to 30 of them, that's $60,000 to $90,000. Wow. You want the 60, 90 grand? That's the way, that's the way you want to do business, right? Sure, sure. Right? So, so that's, if you want wins, that's how you, you help your clients to convert. Yeah. And then how do you do something like this? Um, how do you how do, do something you like this where you're, you're, the more professional of the service is something like that, you don't want to come off spammy, but you want to come off direct enough where they actually are motivated to move. So where's the balance between, you know what I mean? Like, um, um, this is where you educate the client. So at the end of the day, you need to understand your client's sales process. It goes back to what I said earlier on. The more you understand about how your clients do business, the easier it is for you to do business with them because they do business a certain way, right? So if, if it's a longer, let's say the sales cycle is six to 12 months, right? So, so for me, my question would be, why is the sales cycle six months, right? I want to understand why it's taking so long for a customer to make a decision. Do, are there customers that make decisions faster? Who are they? Are there customers that take four months to make a decision? Who are they? And then who are all the six month, 12 month decision makers, right? Mm -hmm. Let's map the sales process. If I understand their sales process and I understand what they do, then it helps me to sit there and say, well, if we can automate some of this stuff and we can take somebody from six months to four months, mm -hmm. we're going to improve your revenue by 30 to 40%. You're going to make sales way faster. Mm -hmm. That's a good thing. Right. So so it comes to the point of understanding if I want to engage, if I want to go to a market and engage a customer in the market, I'm, I want to ask questions before I even engage them. I want to sit and say, listen, I don't want to waste your time. I want to be very succinct. Right. Biggest challenge, biggest frustration, biggest issue you got right now of how customers buy. Is it getting harder to sell your customers? Are they being more informed? Right. Um, are they pushing you on margins more often? Right. Yeah. Do you have a strategy? Have you devised a strategy to actually help your customers make a better purchasing decision so that you can set yourself apart from your competitors? These are all intelligent questions. Most business owners can't answer those questions because they've never thought about it themselves. So by the sheer nature of me asking that question, I'm automatically elevating myself into that advisory role. So it makes it easy for that person to sit and say, listen, if, we, if I know that these are the fundamental issues based on what you're telling me, if we can improve any one of those areas, what sort of impact do you think that's going to have? Well, hell, John, if you can improve the area of, uh, you know, how we handle customers that are coming in overeducated um, and pushing us in margin and price, that's going to be freaking phenomenal, right? Yeah, sure. You know? Sure, sure. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> sorry. Yeah, I got so many questions. I'm just, like, uh, <laughs> just ask away and I'll answer them. Yeah, yeah, here. Yeah, you got it. Yeah. So, so, you know, you have clients and they want a quick win in the beginning, but my, like a process like us, when we do inbound marketing, you're going to have a process to get them some quick wins, but the greater strength is when I build the machine mm -hmm. to basically, you know, really get them on the other side. Mm -hmm. One of the things that we do is, is that we feel like we're nervous that we're going to either under deliver early in the first 60 to 90 days, yep. or we're going to set expectations that we're, you know what I mean? Like you're going to set expectations like, oh, we're going to put the pedal to the metal like that. And it's like, no, you know what? Like we will get enough wins to keep you happy, but you've got to give us some time to build the machine because mm -hmm. sometimes it can take a lot more time, energy, and money to get those quick wins mm -hmm. because you're, you got to be really focused to kind of keep them happy. Where um, You're here for a long time. You're here for a short time. What was that? Are you in business for a long time? Are you in business for a short time? Well, I mean, for us, we, we, have, we probably have about a 95% um, – almost even higher of just uh, our clients just don't leave us. So mm -hmm. it's a long-term relationship with us. Yes. So you so you communicate. The reason why your clients don't leave you, Chris, is because you you communicate heavily with your clients. You're right. engaging your clients. You're, you're, you're walking them through the processes. This is why your, your retention rate is so high, which is fantastic. You've got the right mentality in business um, uh, for your client. Your clients need to think the same way. So it's almost like educating the client to say, listen, this is a marathon, not a sprint. We can go and sprint along the way, but from a strategic point of view, you can't get huge results with making it, without making the, the resource investment that you need to make to get those results. Does that make sense? Right. Yeah. 
Yeah. So if I can show you how we can scale the strategy over time, then naturally over time, the results are going to get bigger. It has a compounding effect, right? Mm -hmm. The idea is we're looking to add to this business, not to take away from this business. Sure. So to sit there, so, so, you know, I cannot guarantee, like I know that I can get anybody 40 inquiries. That's, that's like, that's nothing. For most businesses, 40 inquiries is not a lot of, lot of inquiries, right? It's not difficult and it doesn't cost a lot of money to get that number of inquiries for most businesses. But it's not about the inquiries. It's about how those inquiries are handled and where those, how those inquiries came um, in terms of relevancy to what the business is offering as a service, right? Okay. So that's, that's, the real, that's the real critical factor. So to answer your question is, you know, uh, managing clients' expectations. Managing clients' expectations is being really clear about the objective that you're aiming for, which is the client's objective, not your objective, right? They're saying, look, Chris, this is what I want. This is what we see. This is what we think. Nine times out of ten, because they don't understand what we do and we are the experts, they're looking to us to advise them. So to be able to hit those strides, you've got to, these, this is the process that we're going to go through to hit those strides. I'm not guaranteeing that result, but there are certain elements, half, half the work has got to be done by the client, right? They're the ones delivering on your promises, not you, right? <laughs> They're the ones that engage and interact with the customer, not you, right? Yeah. So, so, so the idea is you're educating the customer strategically um, in partnership almost, and this is why you've got a high retention because of the level of communication, mm -hmm. to say, hey, this is, what, this is what's happening and this is what ha has to happen. You know, I've often, I've often seen the number one thing I see a lot of um, consultants this is a classic example where uh, uh, let's look at AdWords, right? So I, saw, I spoke to somebody who ran an AdWords agency and his retention rate was terrible. Mm. So his sales conversions, phenomenal. Get the client on board, um, high investment in, in paid traffic, uh, but, and he would, but they would last like three or four months and they'd be out the door. Right. And, mm -hmm. uh, and so I said, okay, so what's the, you know, so what's happening with these clients? What's, what's going on? Tell me what's going on. So, well, you know, we get them in, we start the campaigns, we start rolling, the campaign needs to mature in the first six weeks. So, you know, we're getting better and better, targeting better, getting the better results. Right. The problem is, is our clients are telling us that the leads we're getting them are crap. Right. Yeah. And so well, that's really interesting. That's a common, common statement. So my question is, um, are we tracking their calls and are we listening in so that we can actually find out what's going on at their end? Most clients don't want to be monitored. You'll find a lot of pe people in the AdWords game where the clients say, oh, no, no, we don't want to monitor our calls. If I'm doing AdWords for anybody, that's a standard. We, there's no question on no. whether or not we're not, whether or not it happens. And the reason why it happens, and I say to the client, the reason why we track is so that we can double and quadruple the conversions. Do you want that to happen in your business? Right? <laughs> sure. Yes. Right, because doubling the conversions on doing that alone is huge. So the reason we monitor. So if you're telling us it's a crappy lead, we, what the, the PPC guy or the AdWords guy or the Facebook advertising person should be doing is explaining to them how the customer comes about putting their hand up looking for their product, right? So if I'm, let's say I'm a um, uh, knee surgeon, yeah? Let's say I'm a, I'm a specialist in... Uh, uh, in in um, in knocking people's knees around, right? <laughs> <laughs> or joints, you know. I, I work on joints, you know, elbow, you know, shoulders, knees, right? People who are in pain, in severe pain, are looking for somebody who's going to help them to eradicate or alleviate that pain, not to manage it, but to to relieve it, to get rid of it, right? Okay. So, person's looking around the internet, saying, you know, what I've got, I've had this problem for a few years now. I think I need to talk to somebody, right? So they're going to search around. So sometimes they're going to search on an iPad or a mobile device. So website's got to be relevant, right? So they're looking around, I've got knee pain and, I, and they're looking and they see an advertisement and they go, um, you know, let's, let's do a quick consultation and uh, explain to you the process of eradicating your pain. That's the ad. So the person's putting up their hand saying, I need help with my knee pain. Now, Mr. Doctor, can you help the person with knee pain? Is that what you do? Yes. Okay. So the lead that I'm getting you has identified themselves as somebody that is interested in what you have to offer. That's a hot lead. If they've picked up the phone, I don't know about you, Doc, but I don't have time to waste uh, to talk about knee surgery if I don't need knee surgery. Right? I'm not going to waste my time. So, sure. if, so the, the person's a hot lead. So we establish to the person, educate and say, the lead is hot, right? So it's not a shitty lead. It's a hot lead, right? Now at your end, you have to help, your, your goal is to help that person, yes? How do you help them? What process do you take them through to help them sit in that chair with you? That's what we need to address. So now if I'm listening into the calls, which I would put call tracking on everything, I can sit there and say, hey, why is Becky sending your patients to the other doctor down the road? 
Why is that happening? Because all Becky's doing is saying, well, if you want knee surgery with us, you're going to be looking at your insurances. You're looking at a $50,000 uh, deal on getting your knee, knee repaired, right? Thanks for that. Next, right? Now it becomes about the price and not about getting the problem fixed. So we need to educate the client about how the lead comes to them and what the quality of the lead is. A qu high quality lead is inquiring for a purpose. They're not wasting your time, right? The only time it becomes a time waster is when you treat them like a time waster. Nine times out of 10, the reason why paid traffic campaigns fail is because the business fails to actually answer and respond to the inquiry effectively. And so you've got to teach your clients. I work with a very large company. I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, uh, I'm part of this uh, group. Um, we work in a very specific health niche. Um, we know that we've seen the people who handle inquiries effectively. We've seen them have two to 10 times better conversion rates than wow. people who treat their opportunities like crap. You know, so as soon as I hear a client say, hey, you're sending, us, um, you're sending me a bunch of tie kickers, right? Mm -hmm. I'm sitting and saying, well, let's, let's have a look at these tie kickers. Let's see what's yeah. going on. So this is how you manage the client. And as you're getting the wins, you can sit there and say, listen, last month we gave you 40000 or 100000 or $200,000 worth of sales opportunities. You converted $40,000 of those sales opportunities and you paid us four grand for that. Are we good? Yeah. Right? But you lost $80,000 worth of sales opportunities. So can we fix that? If we fix that, that means you pick up another 20 or 30 grand. Would that be cool? Yeah. Are we okay? Yeah. yeah. They're not going to run away from you, right? <laughs> That's the conversation you want to have. You give, me, you give me three or four um, clients at the cost of acquisition and I'll give you 10 or 15 clients. Can we play that game? Yeah. yeah. Would that be cool? And, and so do you, do you really talk to clients the way you're talking right now? Be like, Absolutely. If I could, if I could get you yep. a dream that's just outside of their reach, yep. would you be interested yep. and leave it like and just, yep. just say nothing? And then, Like what do they say? Well, like, oh, how am I going to do that? Like do you – Unpackage that, you know what I mean? Like, so if I'm a knee surgeon and yeah. they're saying, Oh, I can get you 10 new patients. You know well, listen, mean? it's going to cost roughly right now. How much is a knee patient worth to you, doc? Okay, let's look at plastic surgeons right now. If you do rhinoplasty, a, 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 a plastic surgeon gets eight grand, eight thousand bucks to fix somebody's notes. That's how much they get paid. That's not how much the surgery costs. That's not the anesthetist and all that sort of stuff to do the surgery. That's how much money the surgeon makes out of a out of a nose job right eight thousand dollars right yeah that's a that's a nice chunk of change right yeah. so for me to put eight thousand dollars in your pocket how much would you give me to keep giving you eight grand <laughs> yeah. right yeah. so they're going to say you know what i'd, I'd be happy to share a thousand dollars with you right so for me to put eighty thousand dollars in your pocket you're telling me that you'll give me ten grand do you think <laughs> do you think i can get eight do you think i can get eighty grand with a patients with ten thousand dollars in the marketing <laughs> sure. No brainer, right? Yeah. That's called patient casino. Yeah. Sure. You put you put a it works in the reverse. You put some money down and you get some money back, right? Yeah. You need to. I, the, the only reason I say that I talk, I would talk to a plastic surgeon in that way is because he understands that he doesn't understand, um, you know, uh, lead generation. He doesn't understand, yeah. um, you know, uh, uh, you know how many people are searching for a particular service. He, he doesn't get that. But what he does get is how much money he gets paid when he does a rhinoplasty. Mm -hmm. So if I can say, if I know, and by the way, this is a really niche niche uh, for those, if anybody's listening wants to get into this niche, this is a really lucrative niche. Not, not plastic surgery, just rhinoplasty, right? If you were, if you were just doing the yeah. nose jobs, you can go, if you sat there and said, I'll specialize in getting you nose jobs, the yep. search volumes for nose jobs is huge. And the biggest growing market for nose jobs right now is uh, the 18 year olds to uh, 28 year olds, biggest growth market for nose jobs. They don't need nose jobs, their noses are fine, but they think they need to have perfect noses, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. so, and let me tell you, last year in the United States alone, um, there was a million nose jobs, a million yeah. nose jobs, yeah. So, yeah. so uh, anybody listening who wants to get into a niche, that's, that's a really cool niche. Um, <laughs> um, but um, the reason I talk that way to the doctor is because the doctor understands that what the patient is worth. Right, and if he's sitting there thinking, well, if I'm giving you eight grand out of that, out of that, um, uh, uh, out of this deal, right? How much would you buy? How much would you pay every time if if you were to pay for that? How much would you pay? They're going to say, I'll give you five hundred. I'll give you a thousand. Now, my question is going to be, can I get him one patient for a thousand dollars worth of marketing? Mm -hmm. Right, 
and I know yeah. that I could. But can I get him 10? If I've got 10 grand, could I get him, how many patient inquiries could I get him per month? Mm-hmm. I could get him 50, 100, 200 inquiries. Conversion rate, 50 to 60%. That's, five, that's 20, 30 nose jobs. Multiply yeah. 20 to 30 by eight. Now we're talking, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of return on investment. That's patient gotcha. casino. Yeah, right? now look, I'm going to switch gears on you because when we were talking, uh, you, you are not, not, you're not a big SEO guy. Is, is that? Well, no, I like SEO. I think SEO is really important. I think it's more important now than ever before. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I am a big SEO guy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a big I'm a big believer in marketing in general and search engine optimization and search engine marketing is a very powerful um uh, you know it's still really relevant and very important even though seven positions on the front of Google right now are taken up by ads and then the three listing positions which yeah. were seven listing positions now it's three are taken ta- uh, are taking away the organic um, positioning because you know position rank number 1 is uh, actually seventh place on the page. Uh, however, relevancy in search, really important. The more strategic you are about being very clear about the message and what you're putting out there for what your clients are searching for, absolutely, SEO is very important. And that's and it's, it's like a, it should be part of the mix. If I'm doing paid traffic, I want to find out what they're doing uh, search-wise because it's a complementary thing, yeah? Yeah, and that's that's actually what I was trying to get to is, is that when we were talking – you know, I was talking a lot about SEO and stuff like that, and you said, it's not, I, "I guess you didn't really say I'm not against SEO, but you were very much in this. We view it very sim, uh, similarly as, and I try not to put all my eggs in one basket. Yeah, because, like I, I call it like building your house on sand because we don't own Google. Yep, you wake up one day and they take up the whole first page of their ads. Yep, you don't own Facebook. It's 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 the golden era of Facebook, at least in my opinion, in advertising. Yep. Mm-hmm. But they can make one rule change that changes everything that you do. You know yep. what I mean? And yep. so on in the game, you know, it just goes on and on. If you are a one trick horse, mm-hmm. um, I think, you know, you know um, that your reign is going to be short lived. Yep. Um, I've been doing this for 16 years and the things I was doing, <laughs> you know, seven years ago that were working, clients were paying for that does that doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> you know what I mean? But it, it's changed. Wow. The game's changed. Yeah, yeah. But that's that's what it hasn't business changed. Hasn't the way we do business um, changed in the last like in the last ten years? Business has radically changed. You know, our customers are far more uh, informed about what we're doing. They're far more researched. Five years ago, or actually back in two thousand and nine, which is like nine years ago, we only needed five frames of reference to make a purchasing decision. Now today we're doing we're we're actually looking um, at, at twenty three to twenty six frames of reference before we buy something, you know. And I, I don't know if you've experienced this, like I, you know, um, uh, well, I don't know if you know that I travel a little bit, um, but I but I I've got this thing about um, you know travel bags, right? Like how can I uh, uh, fly uh, with the least amount of carriage, um, and how can I travel efficiently? Right. So sometimes I would spend hours researching the best carry on bag that I can travel with, um, watching videos, reading reviews um, to finally make a decision to find the top two bags. And then I would look at bloggers and and because it's a bit of a a hobby or um, an interest for me um, because I want to develop products in this market. Um, I'll go and do that, do that work. So I've gone through 20 frames of reference to go and purchase a $200 bag. Right. Um, you know, and but we do this with cars, with purchasing clothes, um, you know, online. We're looking like, for example, um, I have a friend of mine who's a really big uh, shopper on Amazon. Right. So mm-hmm. she'll get emails from she'll get emails from stores that she's bought from. And the email might say, hey, we've got a deal. You're a customer of ours. You bought off it before. We're going to give you we're going to give you this product at this price. Now, instead of my friends saying, hey, that's a great deal, I like that idea and I'll take advantage of it, they'll take the, they'll copy and paste the exact SKU model, put it into um, uh, uh, Google and go best price for. Now, if somebody is selling exactly the same product for 5 or $10 cheaper, right, Yeah. or gives free delivery, she'll go, I'll buy from that person because it's the same product, right? Sure. So, so, so now she'll search 
for other products in the in the market because she knows competitive advantage there are some people that might might offer a better deal now if that was the best deal and it was right for her she'll make that purchase but there's no loyalty anymore so the behavior of the customer has changed in australia back in australia we've lost five multi-billion dollar retail companies they've gone bust they've gone out because they've become irrelevant to their customers right whereas if you look at uh, companies like h&m zara Uniqlo, they're growing rapidly. They're doing the the opposite. Like they're in re, they're in you mm-hmm. know huge high frontage, expensive retail space globally. They're they're turning into billion dollar brands, and companies that are around them that are competing against them are going out the window, right? Yeah. But the yeah. reason why they're working is as a big part, and this is this is uh, getting to your point, is they're adapting to the market. They're adapting to the changes. They're adapting to the customers' behavior. So it's the same thing with online. If you're if you're doing, you can't do the same thing. You know what worked on Facebook a year ago is not working today. It's changing. In fact, it's getting harder to do Facebook advertising because you've got to really test so much. You know, sure. um, you've got to really know your market and get close. And so you've got to do the work. That's why you want to hire experts. People who are trying to do Facebook for themselves in their own businesses, like our prospective clients, mm-hmm. are, are wasting a shitload of money. Yeah, right. Yeah. And they're angry, like they're getting pissed off about it. It's like, hey, the reason why is because you're not adapting a strategy. You're, what you do is you think, I'll throw a little bit of money at it, thinking what the market wants without doing any testing. You know, So there's an education process. And I think more than ever before, content, video, um, all those sorts of things from a syndication point of view um, dramatically changes the spectrum of how people search and view. And this is why SEO is still really important. But you also need to marry it up with other strategies so that you create a compounding effect. You don't want to just hang into one strategy and not look at other options um, to maximize, uh, you know, your ability to get get results for a client. Yep. You know. Yep. That's awesome. That's awesome. So, so it is now fifty two uh, on the east coast. Uh, it's like one one two hour. Man, I can hang. I'm I'm happy to hang out and answer direct questions from. Those that are watching, um, are more than happy to answer any questions. Great. Well, let me um, let me actually. I'm going to be uh, shutting this down around five o'clock. Um, however, what I wanted to do is sort of give you a couple minutes to talk about the mastermind that you are um, you're putting together. Um, okay. Yeah. I was more than interested when you were telling me we're just about to start the show, and I was like, oh my goodness, that sounds so great. Okay. Uh, so why don't you? Uh, why don't you tell me about that? I'm going to see if I can put the the link on the screen here. Um, every every, uh, every quarter, I hold a mastermind with consultants around uh, from around um, the world. Uh, the last one I held was in New York. There's one coming up on the 25th and 26th of May. Uh, it's going to be held in San Diego. Um, the mastermind is designed to actually. Uh, it's not a. It's not a, um, a an info session. It's more tactical real strategies that you can apply um, literally going out the gate. The idea is to accelerate the process of growth within the business. So I get consultants from all over the world to come to these masterminds and we actually work in real time to go and get uh, get business. So I do bring some experts. There's some seven-figure players in, in, in the market that attend the actual mastermind and we've got people who've got businesses that are trying to scale. And so we talk about um, targeting better clients, increasing average revenues at higher prices, um, taking fast action to get fast results. Uh, the last mastermind we did, we got uh, we out of the group, which is only about 20 people, um, there were f- over 40 appointments that were made within 48 hours with one tactic that we executed the strat- uh, mastermind. One person did $200,000 worth of revenue um, 15 days out of the gate from the mastermind from a strategy they launched at the mastermind. Uh, we had a person that did $110,000 worth of recurring revenue uh, just with one idea from the mastermind. So the idea is to take um, aggressive implementation of ideas and tactics. And so as you're going out there, you're you're focusing on increasing and growing your business. So generally, I'm opening this up to about 35 uh, people. There's a few private uh consultants that I work with that are going to be invited to that to be able to share some of their experiences and knowledge. Um, but it really is two days of, of uh, focusing on better revenue, uh, better quality clients, uh, in client engagement, and then looking to accelerate the, the business. That's awesome. Mm. And then you said there was a there was a way they could get a discount. Is that... Uh, yeah, if, um, if they go to consultingunleashedmastermind.com forward slash San Diego, um, if they type in the word unleashed SD, uh, they will get five hundred dollars off the ticket price. Uh, that is the that is the uh, that's my private membership uh, pricing. 
Um, so if anybody wants to go, I only have 35 placings, 12 are already sold. Uh, it will sell out, they always sell out. Um, um, but yeah, you can save $500 if you use the, uh, the code Unleashed SD. Um, and if you go to consultingunleashedmastermind.com forward slash San Diego, uh, you can save uh, $500 at the event. But it is a, it is a really focused um, a strategic event. I designed it. There's a bit of pre-work leading up to it so people can actually maximize their time at the mastermind. Uh, the goal is to, to add value to the, to the business, basically, and also to, to focus on the most important thing, and that's generating clients uh, and better quality revenues. So we do a lot of fast action type tactical stuff that's to cool. get that happening. Very practical stuff. That's cool. It's no pitch, by the way. It's not a pitch event. There's no. There's nothing you can buy at the event. Um, it is pure strategy, and you're going to be hanging out with people literally from around the world uh, who are coming to this event, and it's it's just intimate enough um, so that you're going to get the most out of it. So it doesn't matter if you're an SEO, uh, paid traffic, Facebook, whatever you're doing, um, this particular event is designed uh, to help you engage clients that are looking to invest in your types of services. That's awesome. That's awesome. It sounds like uh, you couldn't have picked a better place, huh? So, San Diego. Oh, I, had, uh, I, had, I used to uh, have friends that lived in San Diego, and I'd go there, and I'd never want to leave. So, uh, the brand new hotel right on the bay. Um, it's really close to lots of restaurants. Uh, you'll be, you'll be, you know, we uh, we will be feeding and watering you at the actual event itself. But there's an opportunity to to hang out. The reason I'm doing it on the Thursday and the Friday is some people want to make a weekend of it and and hang out in San Diego. And I couldn't imagine a better time. May the weather in San Diego in May is uh, is fantastic. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, John, I want to thank you so much for joining us today. Um, uh, to my audience, what I'm going to be doing is this is going to be on Facebook Live. I'm also going to download this video and put it on our um, on our blog. I'm going to probably have a transcript of some of the, the, the finer points of this. What I will say is, is that I know this was sort of quasi rush hour in the Philadelphia area. So if you are listening to this later, please feel free to send comments or, or write some comments on Facebook Live. You can also email us at info at ferrotech.com. If you've got questions for John, I will forward them to John and he'll answer them for you. You can also reach him on his website, which is consultingunleashed.com. And um, I hope to have John back on the show um, some other time because, um, I mean, he is constantly moving. He's constantly swimming. Every time, I, every time I hear from him, he's got a new idea. So, John, again, thank you so much. This has been wonderful. Um, it was great to have you on on board. So thank you very much, and don't forget his uh, mastermind, Consulting Unleashed Mastermind dot com slash San Diego. Uh, coupon code is um, Unleashed, it, Unleashed SD. SD Un Unleashed SD. Yep. So, John, again, thank you very much. I really, really appreciate it. Thanks for having me, and I really appreciate being here. And uh, uh, I'll look forward to answering some of those questions from from uh, the posts that people make in the uh, when you, when you post this blog. That sounds awesome. Thanks, John. I appreciate okay. it. Cool. Okay. Take care. Yeah.